Welcome, everyone. Uh, thanks for being here. This should be a pretty interesting session. I'm going to show a bunch of things nobody's ever seen before, some things I kind of really got lucky with when we were doing the last webinar. I noticed some things that, my gosh, I've got to study that, and I did. I'm really pleased to bring the results to you today. Um, those who have asked, that this is being recorded, and Louise, bless her heart, will get a link to you later on so you can watch it. Some of you are at work. I see, uh, well, Jack, you're in China, so it's late for you, huh? Uh, but we will have it recorded for you. Um, I'll start in a few moments. We still have more people coming in, uh, but uh, it's really the 12 trades of Christmas. You know, you know, we thought we had a little bit of humor with uh, Black Friday's matter, with the Black Lives Matter, and then we thought we'd pick up on that with the, the 12 Days of Christmas song, uh, My True What Love Would Bring to Me with uh, 12 trades of Christmas that your true commodity love is going to bring to you. We're actually going to have more than 12 trading opportunities, but uh, I think you're going to be able to get a kick out of seeing all of them that you will. Um, oh, good. You've got good sound in London. I'm glad to hear that. We were really worried because Saturday we had, and Sunday, had a horrible internet connection. We were on, we were off. It was just a disaster. So we were really worried what would happen. But today, fortunately, things have been good for us. Uh, good morning from Tokyo. All right, and Milan. Oh, we're people from all over the world here. Okay, well, with that, I think we can get going. And Diana, thank you for joining us. Uh, Perry, uh, I think the sound is good. Vasil or somebody else check in with me at the sound. Uh, anybody having problems with the sound? Oh, you're f with your dad, Casey. <laughs> all right. Oh, wow. Yeah, I just love this. You know, this is the... One of the joys, I guess, of getting old, being around so long, is that we've been able to develop some really wonderful relationships with people uh, all over the world. Uh, one of our favorite people, Adele Briggs, just came on from Australia. I see they've got a really good um, Bitcoin trader down there now. It's kind of interesting. Uh, you know, this Bitcoin thing is going crazy. They'll start trading Sunday night, by the way, if you haven't noticed that. We will follow that to some extent on Larry TV. I'm not quite certain uh, how heavily we'll get involved, but it's the topic of the day, so we will follow it. In Australia, they have a new gal now who's telling people how to trade uh, uh, Bitcoin. Her last job was being a pole dance teacher uh, in some pole dance bar or someplace, but she went from there to Bitcoin. I think that tells us a little bit about the Bitcoin market. I'm not certain, but uh, I think that probably gives us a good idea of what we're in store for if we think we're going to want to trade Bitcoin. But it, it certainly has created a massive market, and we will be following it. So with that, let's get to our PowerPoints, and we're going to get this webinar kicked off. As always, of course, if you have questions, feel free to uh, ask them. I'm going to try to answer as many of them as I can. Uh, I'm not always able to, but um, let's start. So I'd like to talk about this Christmas rally. I think you've probably heard that stocks usually do rally at Christmas time. Uh, you can see that usually rallies starting around the 5th or 6th of November and comes into uh, Christmas and then continues after Christmas. Now, this is really significant because in a moment, I'm going to show you a whole group of stocks that don't follow this rally. In other words, the vast majority of stocks do this, right? But there's a unique group of them that don't. They can't beat the market when they should be. When the, all the bullishness of the market at Christmas is there, there's a bunch of stocks that can't do it, and they're phenomenal short sale candidates and some commodities as well. So I think you're going to get a, a real joy out of what we have to, to shoot today. See today. Hey, Joel, welcome from you. It's been a long time, huh? Okay, so seasonals are not consistent. We're going to be looking at a lot of seasonals, but you know the adage. Uh, buy and uh, sell in May and walk away. Um, well, actually, this was sell in May, that was May in 1942. You wanted to buy stocks. And then buy in October, well, in 1942, uh, the seasonal pattern, which is what you're seeing here, was you actually wanted to sell in October and um, uh, get out in May and be a buyer in May. So these seasonal patterns uh, are not quite what you may have been told. They're not consistent but some are very consistent. Here is Christmas. Uh, this was Christmas 1939, by the way, and you can see the strong seasonal pattern that we saw this Christmas Day, and we continue rallying past Christmas just like we saw. So this pattern 
has been there a long, long time. If we look at the E-minis from 1997 to 2017, we see the same pattern. Look at this pattern right here. It looks almost like what we saw way back in 1939. So what causes this, I believe, is the emotionalism of people. I'm just happier at Christmas time. I don't know, but, you know, we have people from all over the world, some countries where Christmas is not celebrated, but the majority of stock traders have been in America. And we're pretty joyful this time of the year. We're donating money to the Salvation Army and buying gifts, and everybody's happy. Everybody loves everybody. And uh, I think the emotionalism we tend to get carried away with in the financial markets. So what if we buy the E-minis uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, or eight days before Christmas? Uh, well, if we buy four days before Christmas in the last 20 years, that's been correct 90% of the time. So uh, there is a real sweetheart of a trade for you. Uh, we know starting around four days before the holiday, and that makes sense. Here's the holiday, and there's four days before the holiday. You guys and gals want to start looking for a buy signal. Uh, where is the sound? Um, Daryl, uh, you probably can't hear me. If you can't hear me, go out and come back in. Uh, that's the best thing to do. I don't know if I can type an answer to you on that or not, Daryl. No, I can't, and I don't type that well. But if you have that problem, uh, log out and come back in. Um, okay, so we know the days before, and I'm using a large stop here. I'm using a $2,000 stop. So there's still things we can ask about this trade uh, that we want to as traders. Uh, like what should our stop be? Well, in the last 20 years, if we use a, a $2,000 stop, notice I've tested this stop from $1,000 to $2,000, that the amount of money we make at a $1,000 stop is the same amount of money we make a $2,000 stop. Our accuracy slips from 90% to 80%, but when we lose money, we don't get tagged nearly as hard. So there's a rough idea that your stop for this trade, because it's so powerful, can actually be a little bit lower or closer than it usually is. I'm reading somebody's question here. Thanks, Dave, for that. Oh, that's, I didn't know that. Uh, Dave Knight has just said, uh, if you have multiple sound cards uh, on board sound cards headset, you need to select the correct uh, one when logging into the webinar. That's something new to learn. Now, what is the exit? The, the exit is we're going to get out. I'm going to get to, I'm going to build the exit strategy for you. So just bear with me for a moment. Right now, what we see is the ideal would be uh, buying four days prior and about a $2,000 stop. Notice that if we increase that stop up to $3,000, right, we have the same accuracy. Uh, we actually make a little bit more money, um, but we start to suffer in here. So the optimal stop is in that $2,000 area. Are you referencing X trading days? Yes, I'm not calendar days, but these are actual trading days prior to the Christmas holiday. Okay, so how long are we going to hold this trade? That's the next question. What's our well, I tested holding bars. We're going to hold one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, or ten days. And the optimal ideal time has been about five days in this trade. And uh, using that $2,000 stop in the last 20 years, that's been 90% correct. And the net profit of $17,000. That's a huge net profit for only uh, 20 trades. Uh, so that's optimal, but again, the way I see all this stuff, I don't just do it by these numbers. Uh, you know, I look for the market to maybe break down real hard or have a formation of a higher short-term low even prior to four days before. I still want to use my skills or lack of skills as a trader to try to make it even a little bit better than this. So many people want to be these uh, just uh, buy on this date and sell on that date. and, and you're going to see why that may not be the best strategy as we look at some actual trades. On balance, that's been the best strategy, but still, we have to fight with the markets. As you know, the guerrilla war when it comes to trading. Are there entry techniques? Say, I'm going to show some entry techniques, Robert. So, not a lot of them, but a few. So, when we get to there, uh, if you have another question on that, just let me know, huh? Okay. So, what if we buy the E-minis one day before the holiday and hold just one day? Whoa. 
With a $2,000 stop in the last 20 years, that's been right 19 times. So buying one day before the Christmas holiday has been a really great short-term pop trade in the market. Um, uh, it doesn't get much better than that. Um, the average winning trade has been $563. Um, that's, that's pretty good. And it uh, shows what I talked about. And those, if you weren't able to be with me for the Black Friday's Matter webinar, you want to go back and review some of the comments that my friend Art Merrill and my friend uh, Marty Zweig wrote about this phenomenon of holiday trade. This is real. Uh, this is not just some seasonal variable or just a random bunch of numbers that came together. This stuff's real. Okay, buy the E-minis days before the holiday, and then how many days are we going to hold? Actually, if we hold two days, uh, we make a little bit more money. So we've gone from this chart of buying one day, two days, three days, four days before the holiday. We find one day and two days before the holiday are the best. And now we're going to how many days to hold that trade. And yes, Stefan, this is just one contract. There's no money management. There's no smoke and mirror money management games here. Just buying one contract, getting in, getting out. That's all there is to it. Okay, so I'm going to switch now to commodities. If you have questions on the S&Ps, this is a good time to ask those questions because as you can see there's also some strong seasonal patterns in the gold market. This is the seasonal pattern in gold at Christmas. Sometimes you talk about getting out on the first profitable opening. What is it you don't get out on a close? Um, Ron, I found that it tests better to get out on the first profitable opening, not the first profitable close. You've probably seen the markets with the gap way up the next day because today was strong and then they sell off from that big up gap. So in testing what I found, and I found this 1986, 87, something like that, and this test still stay it. If you got a short term pop in the market, the market's moving, it tends to open higher. We get out on that profitable opening and then prices tend to come back. I, I hope that answers your question for you, Ron, if it doesn't let me know. Um, is this true for the SPY? Uh, Mohanad, I don't know because I didn't test the SPY. All I'm testing here is S&P E-minis. They should be comparable, yes, but, you know, I'm, I'm a testing guy. I can only talk about what I tested on, so uh, I hope that uh, that helps. Uh, yeah, and Dave, uh, you can read Dave's comments. He's way ahead of everybody here. Uh, thanks, Dave. The closes, The closing price is really screwed up, guys and gals. And when the market closes, we get a closing price, and later in the day, they change it to a settlement price. So it, that settlement price may or may not be where you could have gotten out, but the opening price is a fit, pretty good idea you could have gotten out there. Okay. Um, does buying one day before Christmas mean buying the opening? That would be buying the opening of the night session, Todd. Yes. So uh, let's say that... Uh, tomorrow is Christmas, I would have bought last night. Does that help answer the question for you? I've seen a delayed bailout exit. Uh, what does that mean? Oh, Bruno, it just means we're going to wait until we get a profitable opening after being in the trade a few days. Will this video be posted? Yes, it will be. Okay, gold. So let's take a look. Look at this in gold. Now this is so interesting because what did gold do today? Gold crash. We're right about in here, right? And gold came down today. Wow, that's pretty interesting. This gold market had a strong pattern declining into Christmas and right after Christmas, whoo, away goes gold. So, can we as traders take advantage of this? If we sell gold X number of days before Christmas, yeah, selling eight days before Christmas in the last 15 years has made $14,000. So, if we look at Christmas right here, we come back eight days that's just about here so is the decline tradable yeah the decline is tradable we don't want to sell one or two days before Christmas but notice out eight nine ten days before Christmas a nice cluster of green in there and a pretty good accuracy and I'm just using a random stop right at, at in the first no this is gold not crude oil we'll get to crude oil um, the gold chart you show is that average price that moves over the back tested period. Uh, you mean this chart, uh, Herbert? This chart is a seasonal, true seasonal pattern of the market. Uh, I won't even get into that. 
but I've written about the difference between seasonals, which I was the first person to ever write a book about this way back in 1973. I did something wrong. It should be the true seasonal. This is the actual seasonal of the market. Okay, good. Okay, so <clears throat> um, what stops should we use in this market? So we're going to say, well, let's use trading days eight days before. And if we test stops from a thousand up to two thousand dollars, we see we start to get our best accuracy at about a nineteen hundred dollar stop. That's interesting, because I've done a lot of <clears throat> testing with uh, stops in gold and eighteen nineteen hundred dollars tends to work out to be the best stop so the best stop seems to be in that nineteen hundred dollars area and that has been true uh, of a lot of systems and strategies automatic trading strategies that i have developed uh, in the gold market so now we've honed in on the days before and the dollar amount so how long should we hold this trade uh, and can we do anything else with it well to make it optimal so we're not just going over yet yeah, art when uh, the video if the sound goes off wait a little bit if that doesn't work then come out of the room and come back in the room and that should do it for you so here's the optimal trade for gold we're gonna sell eight days before the holiday right um, we're gonna hold for five days and we're gonna use a fifteen hundred dollar stop the accuracy is not that great at 66 percent but the profits are eighteen thousand seven hundred and fifty dollars and there's a nice trade i believe that the sell was maybe last night in gold uh, so it looks like we have another winning trade for this year so that would take us up from uh 16 years uh 16 years and 11 winning trades um, eight days does not include the weekend that's correct craig we're just looking at trading days and that's it and how many contracts is valid this is just doing one contract that's all we're trading here one contract you might do more you might do a, a mini contract or whatever you could do it in the ETF the GLD that's all the stuff for you guys and gals to do microphone shows is muted by organizer can't get any sound okay uh, sorry about that we lost internet connection uh, we're back on now okay good so well, again we're having bad internet connections here in the beautiful Virgin Islands so if oh, I'm glad that's good if that happens again it comes and it goes so just uh, I guess just hang in there and uh, hopefully uh, let's go back to our slide um, that's the problems of being here but you're back great okay okay so we have the optimal trade for gold uh, $1,500 stop we're gonna buy eight days before we're gonna hold it for five days and again you know you don't have to be exactly five days we want to be traders and doing this right um, what Michael I just if eight trading days I would I haven't done the count Michael of exactly where we are how many trading days before Christmas I just know we're generally in that area now okay you keep stop in the overnight market yeah I always use stops options I don't know much about options so uh, I don't trade with them <clears throat> so um, you excuse me you saw on that gold chart look at the phenomenal rally that starts around December 25th right here whoa can we take advantage of that yeah you bet we can if we're going to buy gold days after the holiday the optimal one looks like buying about five days after the holiday but notice buying one day after the holiday all these have been uh, real profitable trades in the marketplace um, yeah I'll let you know I don't have a calendar in front of me or my chart so I can't count where we are and the trading number of days here uh, before the holiday but I'll let you guys and gals do that I just don't have all the data in front of me I know we're just generally in that seasonal weak spot of gold okay so after the holiday is the same thing uh, may I ask you to clarify the entries uh, well the entries for the computer again let's go over this we are going to sell on the night session or buy on the night session because that starts one day before the holiday so if tomorrow was Christmas the holiday we would have bought last night because that's the opening of today's day session does that help art and Jose did count and says that the December 13th so is the eighth day before Christmas okay so thanks I was just 
uh, you know, I'm in the midst of doing a webinar here. So sometimes I get nervous when I talk to all you people, all these questions here. Do you count the number of trading days before Christmas if Christmas is on a Sunday? Yes, I just count trading days and nothing else. Okay, so, well, we see there's a lot of money to be made in gold, buying gold after. In fact, if you go out one day all the way out to 12 days after Christmas in the last 13 years, that's been correct 13 times. How do you count the number of trading days before Christmas? If, oh, I did that. Don't be nervous. <laughs> no, I, you know, I, I do get a little nervous doing these things. I mean, you guys are all looking at this. And go, oh, what does he think of this or that or whatever? And I want to be as accurate in this as I can, but I, I get stage fright. That's funny. Stage fright and nobody in front of me to look at, but it's a good thing nobody's in front of me to look at. It's pretty warm here in the Virgin Island today, so I'm dressed in you know, barefoot and shorts and a short sleeve t-shirt. Okay, so way after Christmas, 12 and 13 days after Christmas, in the last 13 years, 13 times in a row, that's been a correct trade. Obviously, a real clear-cut trading advantage where a little bit after Christmas, we want to start looking for and taking buy signals in this market. Crude oil. Somebody asked about crude oil. Oh, hey, here's the crude oil pattern. Look where we are. Da 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 da. We get a little bounce around Christmas and then we come down again. That's been the pattern of this market. Um, we've seen some weakness in crude oil as December started. I guess that's no surprise. That's about what happens. What are the stops for buying 12 days after Christmas? Boyd, uh, the stop for that uh, was uh, a $2,900 stop. I know. Th yeah, that was about a $3,000 stop in gold. You can vary that a little bit. And again, I wouldn't use just an absolute dollar stop if I'm in this position and we'll look at some shortly. I'm going to bring my trailing stop up and look for my reference points in the marketplace. Okay. Yeah, awesome way to live. Yeah, Elizabeth, it's very different living here in the Virgin Islands. Uh, as some of you know, we haven't we were without power for two months. We're living off generators, and I see they're installing lines today in my neighbor's house. He might have electricity in a couple of days or so. But it's a very unusual place to live. Okay, so crude oil we see tends to have a bearish bias. Selling days before Christmas in the last uh, 16 years, 75% of the time, selling two days before Christmas has been a money maker. So again, what we see here is a real opportunity, a bias to have. The, the, maybe it's not your problem in the market, but my problem in the market is, you know, do I want to be long here? Do I want to be short here? Are we in a bull market? Are we in a bear market? I need direction. I need some visibility of the future. I think that's where people get into all their little indicators and they don't have any visibility of the future. I want to know today what should happen tomorrow. And that's what I think this stuff helps us do. It gives us visibility. How many holes was that for a gold buying, uh, a gold trade? Uh, uh, after Christmas, uh, we're holding that uh, first profitable opening after being in a trade one day. We're always talking trading days here. We never look at calendar days. Okay. Do you have a reason like happiness in stocks for gold? Uh, well, uh, yeah, I can come up with a reason. That doesn't necessarily mean it's right because... Yeah, there's probably a reason why, because we just hold that. I'll, I'll answer the gold thing in a moment. You're going to see something else that I think will, will come into this and might answer the what happens in gold. And crude oil, I, I don't know. So, you know, what's amazing to me is that heating oil comes down this time of the year, and you'd think that it would go up this time of the year because it ought to get cold, right? Um, but uh, here's the reality of the marketplace. That's what we deal with. So crude, we're going to sell two days before Christmas, and that's a heck of a trade. Um, so we know we have a bias in the energy market and also selling after Christmas, because remember, this is Christmas, and look what happens shortly after Christmas. Wow, it comes down, right? So this intrigues me as a trader because A, we're in a seasonal downtrend. B, we've had a rally against the downtrend, and then we come down. Makes perfect sense, right? Yes, Robert, we will be looking at some stocks. Absolutely. So... Hold on to your clipboards. We're going to get there. That actually, to me, is the most exciting thing in going on in these seasonal trade. So uh, selling uh, seven days after Christmas, after that little rally is in, 
and 92% accuracy and stop is $2,600. Selling days after with a stop, that $2,600 stop tests out the best. It looks like we start to get a good stop in that $2,000 area. Or again, you could use market structure um, uh, for your trades. Uh, Dave says, I can't believe all the green. It's amazing, isn't it, Dave, that we've been able to uncover these little things here. Wait till you look at stocks. You'll see the same thing. Major bias in the marketplace. And that's really what I need as a trade. I'm not going to go exactly on these days and exactly these stops. But what I want is something just get in here now. Get out of here now. That's what I really am looking for. Cattle. Whoa, who would know that there's a seasonal uh, in cattle? And there is. You can see we start to rally. And shortly after Christmas, we start to go down. So buying cattle six days before Christmas, five days before Christmas in the last 12 years has been successful 12 times in a row. And I'm using a $1,000 stop. So <laughs> strong bias in the cattle market. How long could we hold that? Well, we could hold that. The best holding strategy would be about eight days, but we have one losing trade. If we hold five days and get out uh, in the last 12 years, they've all been successful. So I think holding for about five days, you don't want to be in that forever. Um, you know, four or five days is your time window. And again, it's a suggestive time window, but it gives a really good idea of what we want to do here. Uh, Larry, when you test all these, do you use the adjusted or unadjusted contracts? Uh, Joe, I'm using the back adjusted contract in trade station. Uh, the chart show gold rising for about a month after Christmas. Why well, saw it the first profit only? Rick, it doesn't always continue rallying on that. When I test it, and you'll see some years it doesn't. So I just want to get in the very strongest part, get in, get out, and be get back on the sidelines. To me, where I want to be as a trader is not in a position because I can't get hurt. Uh, I want to be sitting on the bench. If I get on the field, I can get hurt real badly. So I want to get in and get out. And that's just my philosophy. It could be wrong, but that's just the way I approach it is all. Uh, uh, these charts are based on, depending on the market, how much data we have, There's, so you're going to see some with a lot more than 12 or 16 years, but we'll get to those. <clears throat> From your tables, how can one tell how many days you're holding? <clears throat> right here it says hold bars, so we know we're holding. Williams Holiday test strategy hold bars one two three four five. got it. The only way to have a losing trade is to be stopped out. That's correct. You're going to be stopped out or get out after X number of days being in the trade. Each bar is one day. That's correct. Cattle buy six days before. Well, where's our best stop for a cattle? Well, clearly about one thousand one hundred dollars. Notice as we take the stop from five hundred to all the way up to a thousand, we're 91% accurate, but over $1,100, we've never seen the market move that much against it. So part of what I want to show you here is we start with a bias, right? <clears throat> okay, how are we going to build on this bias? Well, how many days before, how many days to hold, and what's our best stop? Um, so I'm just showing my thinking process in that, and that certainly doesn't mean that it's correct, but it's the way I go about looking at these strong uh, holiday type trades in here. Uh, what is the effective difference between trading the day of the month number analysis compared to uh, John? I don't know the answer to John St. Clair's question. I, I I have to know how many days before I want to do. So I I don't want to use the seasonal pattern itself, other than a suggestion of start looking at this time of the year for a trade. <coughs> Excuse me, sugar. And we're through with cattle. We're going to talk about sugar now. And our internet is a little slow. There's our sugar seasonal. Those are live cattle we were talking about, Frank. OK, so I look at the seasonal chart in sugar. And thought, oh, interesting. It comes down, rallies around Christmas, and comes down again. In fact, it tends to be in a downtrend from around the middle of November into the first part of the year. Interesting. Do we have some opportunities there? probably do. So we're going to look at selling sugar days before Christmas. And we see if we sell sugar about 12 days before the Christmas holiday in the last, that's right, 
50 years, 49 years, that trade has been successful 37 times, 75% of the time. In the case of sugar, we have a whole lot more data. Boy, Dave, I agree with you. The ice date is $110 a month. Stupid thing. You want to have more people trade your contract. You want to have a low data fee. Well, I don't understand what these guys are thinking of. Why in the heck should they increase the data fee service to trade a thin market? The markets only get thinner. But hey, you know what? They were just traders. What do we know, right? But anyway, it looks like, well, we have a bias in sugar to sell somewhere around 12, 13, 14 days prior to Christmas. We see a lot of green in there, don't we? we? See a little green right around two or three days before as well. So we have a trading bias. So once we know that, we probably want to say, well, uh, what's our best holding time period? We know we've got the best time period around eight, nine days, 10 days before. So what should we hold it? And we see that the best hold, I'm testing hold bars now, is about 10 days. And in the last 49 years, that's been right 32% of the time, 65%. So it gives me an idea of what we can be doing here. And I've got to make a screen change here. Oh. Okay. Yes, you could trade ETFs on sugar. That's a good point, Martin, instead of the actual uh, contract. Uh, the stop on sugar is $1,000. Again, you can see our losing trade over here <clears throat> would be $1,000. Okay. So what else can we know about the sugar market? If we wanted to test the best stop, that would be the next thing. We've gone from days before, how long to hold it, and what's our best stop. And if we test from 500 all the way out to $2,000, looks to me like we start to get this high accuracy with about a, gosh, a $900 stop. We make the most money. Our accuracy goes up with a higher stop at $1,500 over here, but uh, we don't make any more money, do we? So somewhere in that $900 to $1,000 range looks like it's the best stop to use uh, in the sugar market. And again, I would default to market structure as I'm actually trading the market. But it gives us a good idea of what our risk is coming into these trades. Today was 14 trading days before Christmas for those wanting to do sugar trade, 12 trading days. Oh, thank you, Dave. On cattle, have you seen premium increase in nearby contract? I haven't looked at cattle today, so I think it has been increasing though. So I want to show the equity curve because this is, shows how deceptive all these numbers can be. So the next chart is the equity curve. Now notice the equity curve <coughs> goes trades from trade zero to 40 without some 40 years of this trade, right? We really had one losing trade here and one big losing trade here and rest of them was one losing trade a year ago. That's it. We've had, so the dollars are, the equity curve means a lot to me. Is this a consistent bias we found in the marketplace? And it, it sure looked to me like it is. And that's selling sugar nine days after Christmas. Well, if we use sugar, what else do we use sugar in? Probably cocoa. So I thought, well, let's take a look at cocoa because all these things are popular this time of the year. Uh, chocolate, how many chocolate gifts will people get this year? Bonbons, uh, I was shopping today. What, oh, almond roca, oh, I love those things. They were better when I was a kid. I think they made them better with more almonds on them. But um, all that type of stuff uh, is part of what happens at Christmas. Cocoa actually starts to top out before Christmas, but right after Christmas and shortly before. Look at the big downtrend this market is usually in. So given that, we can think about, <clears throat> do we have a trading opportunity here? We may, we may not. So I first want to test, well, how many days before Christmas should I look for this trade? And so I have tested that. I can give you the answer for that, that two days prior to, to uh, Christmas has been made the most money to sell cocoa. In fact, in the last 50, uh, four, the total trade has been 51 years. 40 years that, that trade has been successful. So we have a good number of, of data points here, don't we? So selling cocoa two days before Christmas uh, has made uh, the most money. So 
now we've zeroed in on when before Christmas we want to be a seller. So the next thing then is, well, okay, <coughs> excuse me, uh, what should our stop be? Do we have an idea of where our optimal stop in this market is? And you should see that chart in a moment coming up on your screen. There it is. So I test the stops next, and a $1,900 stop actually makes the most money. Pretty big stop in Cocoa. Uh, I see we're making pretty good money at $21,000, $22,000 with a $1,400 stop. With a very small stop of uh, $1,000, you make just about as much at $19,000. Uh, your accuracy is 80%. So, you know, you, you, it's like in life itself. When you get something, you give up something. If you, you get accuracy down here, but you give up large losses. You get smaller losses down here, but your accuracy drops. And that's the way it always is in any system. How do you test the strategy with TradeStation? Well, I've had to have my programmer write all this stuff. Uh, if this, these strategies are not in TradeStation, we had to program all this, which we did quite a few years ago. And I've been following and taking these trades, of course, for quite some time. Okay, we're going to talk about stocks next. And uh, when you think about who's really busy at Christmas time, one name that comes to me would be FedEx. Because FedEx is delivering a lot of stuff, packages all over the world, uh, and they have a very strong seasonal pattern, as you can see in the chart now. Uh, around December 7th or 8th, about where we are now, give or take a couple days, FedEx usually starts to come down. And then you can see where Christmas is marked off. And we get a little bounce after Christmas, and then we continue in that downtrend. Does that give you any trading strategy ideas? Probably does now, huh? So we want to test selling FedEx before Christmas to see how we can best take advantage of uh, selling or what advantage we have. And we can see from the chart where it's going to be a few days before Christmas, and when we test it, we find out in the last 39 years, selling 12 days before Christmas has been correct 38 years in a row. And I'm using a three, $3 stop here. So clearly that bias is there for that dip down that you just saw in the chart prior to Christmas. FedEx tends to top out about 12 days before Christmas and comes down. And there's certainly a trading opportunity there. But we'd like to know what would be the best stop. So we're going to be in this trade. What type of a stop can we use in this market? So, of course, we're going to test the stop in this. And you'll see that chart next. And we see that the best stop is probably in the area of a uh, two or three point stop. And that looks like the best stop. If that stop gets start to be real big, uh, six points over here, notice that uh, we start to give back some money because when we get a trade against us, we lose too much money. So your ideal stop is about three points. And that in the last 39 years has been 87% correct. If the stops are too large for people and they're not trading mechanically, can they look for obvious places for stops? Yeah, that's what I do, Dave. I mean, uh, uh, my stop may be this big. It may be smaller. I still want to look, as we will in a moment here, at actual trades. Um, you don't. Uh, the idea of showing you these stops isn't so you just all march to the same tune and have that X dollar of stops. But how much risk do you have going into this trade? I never buy the absolute low and get out at the absolute high. My gosh, I saw how much exposure I'm going to get in the trade and still feel comfortable. That's where it is. And uh, this is trading um, uh, 100 shares. Okay, so FedEx sell. How many days we want to hold this trade? Well, we can get the high accuracy holding it for three or four days. If you want to make a lot of money, uh, you're going to hold it for about ten days. Yes, three point three dollars. Okay, so now what does this trade really look like? You've seen all these numbers. Oh, they look really impressive. So easy to trade it. Yeah. Well, you know what? It's a whole lot different uh, when you actually get in the marketplace. Calculation made for one trading lot. Thank you. Okay, so here's the actual trade. Here's the seasonal pattern in FedEx to start to go down. I marked it with a blue line. So I'm in the trade. Do I, I could just sell that day if you want to. That's our X days before Christmas. That's when we're going to sell. 
should sell on this day's opening. The way I like to do this, well, the market's been an uptrend, so for this day, I'm going to have my stop at the prior day low, and then we make a higher close. I'm not stopped out. My stop is at this day's low. Oh, a big up move in the market. My stop is now this day's low, and I get short over here. That would be one really simple trading strategy to use in the marketplace, okay? So once we get into the time zone, let the market prove itself. Additionally, as the market starts to break and follow the seasonal pattern, rallies up here, I could be a seller at this bar's low, which I would have sold here on the gap down the next morning, but continued in the trade itself because that's the expectation that we have. So I really have a couple of trading opportunities. One, with my trading very tight trailing stop. Two, this high is lower than that high, so I know I'm in a downtrend and can sell when we penetrate that day's low. So back to FedEx again um, with the ideal stop and a two-day exit tested out the very best exit, and that's 39 years, 37 winning trades. That's amazing, isn't it? And you know what amazed me? Nobody's, you've never seen this before. Nobody's seen this stuff. This huge pattern for some of these stocks to come down right after Christmas. And in this case, we're using um, a two-day exit. You can see the ex number of days exit. Okay, so again, what it may look like. Well, in this case, uh, our entry was um, uh, right here. This was the day that we should have sold. Well, it, break, it broke out, good, we can continue it down. And then we start to get lower short-term highs over here. We can sell at this day's low. And again, we break out over here, you could have sold here. So what I like to do is get in that zone and then look for the formation of lower short-term highs for my entry into the marketplace. Here's another example of what it may look like. This is selling X days before Christmas, sold in the opening market, immediately moved against us. Boom, there's our first profitable opening after being in a trade a couple of days, we're out of the trade. Notice though, this outside bar, our, our tight trailing stops, oh, we're short there, and you're out with your first profitable opening. It's a big profit, I mean, take it. Again, we get the formation of lower short-term highs over here, but we're now out of our seasonal weakness spot. Okay, look at this equity curve. This is really interesting. Nice equity curve there, one losing trade. Same song, same result. FedEx. Well, who does what FedEx does? You probably came up with the answer. UPS. So the equity curve that you just saw was using the stops and the dollars and the days before on UPS. Because look at UPS, it has the same seasonal. All these guys that deliver all these boxes at Christmas, guess what? There's a real strong pattern to their stocks. Uh, Robert, the outside bar was triggered by the low of the inside bar. Uh, I don't have the chart on, but yeah, when I make that new high and then take out the prior day's low, that would be the entry. So, well, we can beat up UPS then, can't we, all day long, just like we beat up um, uh, uh, FedEx. Lower short-term high and the closes, no, I'll do it interday, Chuck. Okay, so you're selling UPS days before the holiday. You know, look at that, eight, nine, ten days before the holiday. That's what we we're looking at in um, uh, FedEx. Whoa, look at that. In the last 17 years, 16 of the time, there's been a winter trade. Um, Joel, I'm using points, not percentages in these tests. So clearly, 10, 11, 12 days before Christmas, I want to look to be a seller of UPS. You option guys and gals could be, uh, what do you write a call and buy puts or something, right? Days to hold, the optimal hold for this trade, look to be about eight days. That's made the most money. Buy a put or sell a call. Thanks, Diana. The best dollar stop, well, I tested from one point all the way up to 15 points. <coughs> Excuse me. The best stop comes in. We make the same amount of money, the same accuracy with a four-point stop. And these are really, uh, you know, when this stock sold for 30 a $4 stop was huge. Where it sells for now, 
a four dollar stop isn't as much so uh, I wouldn't go automatically by these but it just to show that again the exposure you can have oh you like the real world examples yeah, yeah the real world's where it is isn't it <laughs> so let's look at some more real world examples uh, Larry, usually you're betting on the weakest one. Isn't that like this? Yeah, I want to. I want to bet on the weak, weakest one in the thing here. And Dave, yeah, you could do this in ETFs, I guess, or you know what? My I see my position here, so because everybody trades different things different ways. Like, hey guys and gals, look what I found. Let me share this with you. Okay, so this is uh, UPS, and here's the day that we want to sell it. Uh, automatically sell it well again we can use our trailing stop you sell up here or getting below this bar is low you can sell here then we have a lower short-term high here once we take out this day's low you could be a seller here and you can follow the seasonal tendency down you can have your trailing stop come down but what I like to do especially if I'm seeing a lot of strength at the seasonal tendency is just keep trailing my stop right up underneath the market so UPS formation looks smoother than FedEx. Well, that's just this year, whenever this year was. I don't know. These charts never look smooth to me, man. They're always tough. Could you take a minute to explain the first profitable opening concepts? Sure. The first profitable openings I buy, let's say I bought on this red line day. The next day, I do not open profitably. I'm buying on the close here. The, the opening is not profitable. The next day, the opening is profitable. I would be out of the trade. I hope that answers it for you. Uh, what about for e-mini futures? They get the first profitable opening, the day session opens at night. Kind of confusing, isn't it? The day session used to open in the day. Now they open at night. So I would be getting out of the night session opening and all these tests. Yeah, Gene, I hope that answers it. If not, let me know. huh? Okay. Uh, oh, good. Thank you. What's the big push at Christmas time? What if all the television ads right now are for cars and one other thing? What are you going to buy your wife to show her that you really love her? Jewelry. Look, I tell you, stop and think about it. Yeah, they sell all the stuff before Christmas. And after Christmas, well, they don't have any sales, right? I mean, they make all the, not all their money, but most of their money in jewelry stores is made leading up to Christmas holidays. So you would expect a huge bias. And guess what I found? There is one. And Signet Jewelers is probably the best the stock. You see it right around the 1st of December. Typically, we've uh, topped out a little Christmas rally. That's good. We'd expect that at Christmas. And then back down again. Now, you may not know who Signet Jewelers is. So I'm on my next chart, I want you to see who these are. These are the people you see advertising night after night. K Jewelers, same as Zale, same as Jared. Same as a Galleria, same as H. Samuel, same as Ernest Joan, and Piercing Pagoda. That's our new upscale one now. Um, this Signet had been a very strong stock until the, somebody asked the president of the company one day how they made all the money. They made a lot of money. He said, oh, we just sell a bunch of junk to people. <laughs> like a bunch of junk? Come on, this is jewelry. Annual sales, $6 billion. This is a big company, right? And a very strong seasonal influence. So given that, yeah, they own all those. Isn't that amazing, Dave? We probably can, uh, could come up with a trading strategy. I mean, anybody doesn't take me to come up with a strategy once we see the bias. We see that, as we would think, going out before Christmas, 12 days before Christmas is profitable 80% of the time. Selling one day uh, before Christmas is uh, almost 90% of the time has been profitable eight out of the last nine years. That's been a profitable trade. It recently has had a big decline from 76. Uh, no, it, you know, these tests that we're doing don't know if the market was an uptrend, downtrend, sideways trend. Ben Bernanke was in the Federal Reserve. Don't know any of that. We're just looking at the numbers here. But the fact has been in a downtrend, I like, because I would think that if it's been weak, it should get weaker when the seasonal influence to be weak is there. Okay, well, the next question, of course, is we know how far to sell it. Well, how long can we hold on to this trade? This is it a little two-day trade, or can we hold on to the trade? And I've answered that in our next slide. The best days to hold isn't really what it shows here, I don't think. This 10 days makes all the money. Trade station automatically says that's the best. But look at this. 
my accuracy is 55% versus 89%, 89% at one and two days. So I prefer a two day hold because I make about the same amount of money and my accuracy is not 55%, it's a lot higher. So whenever you look at these numbers, you really, it was Ratner, yeah, who, that was the guy who told us, audience, this is all a bunch of junk jewelry that they sell at the gallery and all these places. Oh, he got kicked out of the company for saying that. So um, there's days to hold. We want to hold this a couple of days. And of course, if we are in a trade, we're exposed to risk. So we want to think about what could our best dollar stop be. And I've tested the stops for you. And again, the stops are kind of interesting. Uh, if you're real close stop, one or two points away, well, that's way too much. Three point stop, you make as much money as a 15 point stop. A 15 point stop, uh, it's a huge stop. It may take a long time to get out of the trade. 100% accuracy, but I'm going to go with the $3 stop in this. This is a whole lot closer to reality that I'm going to trade with. Can you show the hold table? Sure, I'll go back to that. Uh, it takes a little bit for the that to pop up on your screen, George, but uh, there's the days to hold, okay? Are these stocks seasonal charts posted anyway? No, they're not posted any place. They're just here. That's all that's Nobody in the world has seen this stuff before you guys and gals. Nobody, ever. This is just stuff for us. I See, I, I got so excited during the uh, Black Friday's Matter webinar because I saw all these sell. Like, geez, I never tested that. I've taken the Christmas rally trade because that's really strong. And that Think about this. We stock after stock. We see the declines here in these certain groups of stocks after Christmas, or even b before Christmas. When the market itself rallies, these stocks decline. So we really have a unique situation here. Everybody's, oh, buy stocks at Christmas. Yeah, buy some stocks at Christmas, but here's some stocks we don't want to buy at Christmas. So there's our sales days after. I think we saw that chart. Well, hey, uh, you know, we got this jewelry company. How about Tiffany? Uh, you know, that's a jewelry company. Oh, look at that. It's just about the same seasonal pattern. It tops out before Christmas. After Christmas, you want to sell it again. When I was doing the... the uh, uh, Black Friday's Matter webinar, so I thought, oh my gosh, I think I even commented on, there are some great short sale opportunities here, and uh, that's when I started beating up this computers on this. You did three of the Thanksgiving trades. Yeah, I, my brother-in-law did Thanksgiving trades. He was like, oh, and he can't be for the webinar. He's got a, he's get, doing something in Australia. He lives in San Francisco. He said, oh, I want to be there. We had to send him the PowerPoints first. Oh, Dave, uh, that's kind. You know what I found? Um, a Walmart, Tabor, I don't have Wal Well, we'll look at Walmart in a moment. Walmart's been really strong to be a buyer before uh, the, the market. Um, you know, I really enjoy sharing this stuff, and I'm so blessed to have so many followers as you people. The reason we can do the free webinars and stuff is because you guys and gals buy other stuff. You know, uh, we don't have to sell every single day like so many people do, and because we do have good support, uh, and I, we really appreciate uh, your business, and so it's a real joy to do things like this when we can do them. On the commodity trades, do you... Uh, no, David, for the commodity trades I've shown, we, we're not doing anything but the trading days before the month. That's it. When will we get an email with a recording? Well, it depends on how quickly Louise can get to this and uh, sometime in the next 24 hours, okay? So, Tiffany, we want to sell before Christmas. Well... 10, 12 days before Christmas. Whoa, look at that. 100% of the time in the last 30 years selling Tiffany 12 days or 16 days before Christmas and getting out after being the trade, whatever number of days. Well, look at that. has been profitable. Oh, my gosh. Be sweet to Louise. Yeah, <laughs> have to be sweet to Louise. You bet. So, um we can also sell it after. Remember we saw that Tiffany usually rallies up at Christmas time and then it comes down. Mm, selling one day before Christmas isn't bad. Last 29 years, 26 winning trades. Seven, eight days though, we get up to 93% accuracy. So again, we see that little bobble after Christmas. Another time to start selling. Uh, uh, too bad there isn't a diamond future. That would be interesting, Dave. If there was a diamond future market, that baby's got to be really seasonal. Do you have a trading service that highlights season? No, you know, I, I trade. We don't we do not do all the service. We do Larry TV, where I make my market commentaries of what I'm doing, what I try to find set up trades for you in advance so you know today 
what's going to happen tomorrow or so. Um, uh, so that's what we do. That's really all that I do anymore. And uh, I just don't have all this other stuff. Okay, what's our best stop going to be, right? We'll continue along. Thanks, Joe, for those comments. The be What's the best stop going to be in Tiffany? Well, if we go all the way out to a five-point stop, 29 years, 29 winning trades, you have a little closer stop at four points, and you only win 28 out of the last 29 years. <clears throat> oh, you could do ETFs or diamonds. Pick an SLX. Thank you. I haven't done those. Do you cover these types of trades on Larry TV? Oh, yeah, absolutely, Alan. Every, at the start of every month, we show the best seasonal setup trades for gold, for bonds, and for uh, the S&Ps. And, of course, we have a lot of other trades as well, but uh, absolutely we do that. Best Buy, a big retail company. They usually rally shortly after Christmas and come down. We've seen this pattern quite a bit, isn't it? Are you going to hold daughter short-term trading lesson? I, I think I've retired. Uh, I, you know, I've got about the same song. I'm trading the same way short-term now that I did when I shot, uh, taught the daughter short-term trading, what, four or five years ago. So I, I, you guys have had enough of me. He's like webinars. So best, uh, best BBY, Best Buy, has a really strong seasonal pattern. Again, it doesn't take me to point out we probably want to sell it before Christmas and we'll probably want to sell it after Christmas. We have a bounce trade right after Christmas downtrend. We want to sell it. So if I'm lower in uh, the first of the year than I was in December, I know I'm in a downtrend and I'm matching the seasonal pattern and I would want to sell it short. So best number of days to sell uh, BBY, best buy before Christmas, about mm, 14, 15 days before Christmas looks like it's the best time to be a seller. After all, in the last 30 years, it's been correct. If you go to 16 days, 90, 80, 90% of the time. So we know there's a lot of green stuff here, a lot of seasonal weakness to take uh, advantage of. How many days we want to hold it? Well, in this case, we can hold it for a few days. Of course, the longer you hold it, the more you make, but the, your accuracy goes down. That's what always happens. Looks like hold, the best hold is seven or eight days because we maintain pretty good high accuracy. Notice the accuracy is about the same. We want to hold it for six, seven days, somewhere in that area. Any ideas on BONZ, you mean bond market? Uh, <clears throat> I you know, don't recall off the top of my head, um, but it's on Larry TV. Uh, best business, BBY sell. The best stop uh, looks like about a $4 stop. And the last 31 years, 87% of the time, that's been a winning stop. Uh, the bigger the stop, uh, usually you get more accuracy, but you start to lose money because you get your losses are bigger. So a three, four dollar stop looks like our best stop there. Uh, we're trading, I think, one share, one contract here. Okay, uh, Victoria's Secrets. We talked about that on the Black Lives Matter, Black Black Fridays Matter webinar. Same thing, same pattern that we see in that. And, and again, this is what fascinates me. This is not the pattern of the majority of stocks. At the first of the webinar, I showed the E-mini seasonal patterns that going to be rallying after Christmas. But here's this group of retail stocks, we'll look at the ETF in a moment, that don't do what rest of the market does. Okay, so Victoria's Secret selling days before Christmas, about 11 days before Christmas, 10, 11 days, has been the sweet seasonal spot for a sell. Selling days after Christmas, about nine days after Christmas. In the last 33, 33 years, we're looking at 87% accuracy. And this is an interesting chart. This is the equity chart, which shows us stuff that you didn't see in the chart that's in front of you of selling days after. Like, okay, well, let's look at that. What does the equity look like? Well, look, there was one losing trade a long time ago. And uh, rest of trades have been successful. So a long time ago, you got stopped out of the trade and maybe you know, we'd have to look at the price and where the stop was back then. But what I'm looking for is consistency. And it certainly looked to me like we have consistency there. Yeah, I, I know you guys, I can't show the pretty girls in Victoria's Secret because Louise wouldn't let me do that. Enough of that. Okay, Target. <laughs> Guess what? Big retailer, right? Look at the same pattern. A high before Christmas, come down, rally at Christmas, and there's that weaker point. 
So what you want to be doing, I'm going to see if I can draw on this chart, is I'd like to see the market it's this year do something like come down like this and a little rally here. So if I see the market matching the seasonal pattern, I'm pretty much, I hear the, Louise, the girls are, are chiming in for you now on No Victoria's Secret Models. <laughs> Way to go, Diana. <laughs> uh, we'll have to look at Walmart in a moment. I, I will look at Walmart separately. So I would like to see the market, uh, the actual market doing this this year. Top out in here, come down, start to rally up in here. Then, because it's matching this seasonal pattern, I'm really interested in taking this trade. Um, so let's see if I can erase all drawings. And get back to my... I guess we'll do the spotlight from now on. What is the stop for? It was about three or four dollars was the stop, Boyd. Uh, Louise, I need your help. I've got this little drawing tool thing on. I don't want to have it on. I erase all drawings. And I can't switch my slides. What would you do without Louise? Thank you. Okay. So, target. We're going to look at selling days before. Uh, we see about five days before seems to be the best number of days. You can see that. And look at 37 years of this. This is a long time. A lot of stuff's gone all over the place. Good years, bad years. and um, There's real big bias there. How long can we hold the trade? Of course, that's the next question we want to do. This is a trade we want to get in and get out real quickly. Can we wait around a couple of days? And the answer is this is two, three days. Seems to be the optimal time with 91% accuracy, call it 92% accuracy in the trade. So it's a quick pop in the market. And of course, what should our stop be once we know we've got that bias in the marketplace? And I test stops one, two, three, four. You'll see that in a moment on your screen. Bear with me. There we go. And we see four is probably the best stop uh, with 92% accuracy. Well, we saw that little decline in target after Christmas. So we want to look at that potential trade next. We're going to look at target selling the days after Christmas because we saw how we see this so often. Um, uh, what takes place. So target sell days after, about eight days after Christmas. Uh, and I'm using the same stop that we just had. Uh, it has been uh, 39 years, 92% uh, of those trades have been winners. Comments on the US dollar index? I don't know. I went long the dollar index. It was on Larry TV. Uh, and I went long the dollar index a couple of days ago. I forget the exact day, but I think we're going to continue rallying in here. Probably have another pullback and then go back higher. Um, so uh, uh, I want to sell, I want to wait because we get that little bounce at Christmas but then we see that market start to go back down about eight days after uh, the holiday I want to start looking to sell target short. Instead of seasonals, have you ever done this type of testing with ADX plus 60? I have but uh, it's not as consistent as this because we found something here. You you guys and gals know something nobody's known. There's this pattern of these retail stocks to rally. Here's the ETF for for retail stocks. For, okay, rally up till about the 11th, come down and then collapse after Christmas. And we've seen this. Yes, it's being recorded. You will get the link out to you. We've seen this in chart after chart after chart of retail jewelry, UPS. FedEx, all these people are into the business of Christmas. Their business really is Christmas at this time of the year. And what's so interesting is rest of stocks don't do this. So this is a real anomaly in the marketplace that we've been able to uncover for ourselves. Okay, so there's your ETF trade. Uh, we want to sell after Christmas. Uh, and we use the red line you saw is Christmas. So how many days after Christmas? Our next chart's going to give the answer to that. The next uh, about eight days after Christmas. 
does fee bonds have a Christmas pattern like that? that Dave, look at the T bonds. We did that in the Black Lives Black Black Fridays Matter webinar. I don't recall off the top of my head yet, but there's a real strong seasonal bias for bonds at this time of year. And trading XLY, a discretionary consumer spending. Yeah, I should look at that. I haven't looked at that, and I only like to comment about what I've tested. So, selling about eight days after. XRT uh, has been successful. Uh, our stop, wow, look at that. If we uh, use a two-point stop, it's been 11 years, they've all made money. See, the fun thing for me is you guys are putting up things I've never heard of, XLY, all these other things. You got the idea. Now, you can go out and use this idea, what we found here in a whole variety of ways. I've just started to plow a little bit of dirt here and kind of get tired of plowing. I'm like, oh, I, I don't know all these things you people know. You know so much more than I know. So it's exciting for you people to say, oh, look at this and that. That's We can share this stuff together and all get a little bit better. Now there are a lot of questions about Walmart. So we do have a chart of Walmart. Do you think a decline in sales of big box stores going to Internet? Um, it probably would make it a little more effective, the big box th stores but the pattern's been there. I just want to trade the pattern. So here's the Walmart pattern. Uh, Walmart, as you saw earlier when we did our, our Black uh, Fridays Matter, has been a really strong seasonal pattern to buy this. But look what happens right after Christmas. Exactly what you'd expect. Walmart starts to go down. Yes, we will share the PowerPoints. Um, so, uh, and this is just an idea. I didn't do all the numbers here, but a lot of people are interested in stocks. So, yeah, after Christmas, about six days after Christmas, into the new year, Walmart goes down. Uh, I'm a chart ahead of you, so there's the Walmart. You can see again, right after Christmas, you want to start looking for your short sale uh, in the stock. What about the TS strategy for doing these tests? How hard is that to code? You know, I don't know how to code, Bernie. All I know is that we have a programmer that does these things for me. And of course, you always tell me it's very difficult to program anything. Um, so, and his name is Chad Noble. Uh, okay, so um, other ideas, Amazon. Well, it's the same basic pattern, isn't it? Amazon's in the Christmas business, and there's Christmas, and look what happens a few days after Christmas in this huge stock of Amazon, right? How about Home Depot? Wow, massive Christmas sales. Everybody's got wives are going out and they're buying drills and power saws and barbecuers and whatever guys want. You go to Home Depot and get it for them. Then after Christmas, stock goes down. Google, same thing with Google. Your Google chart should, there it goes, uh, just populated. And uh, another, I think, is a, a retail stock, if you will, Starbucks, because they have big Christmas sales. Everybody's out Christmas shopping. They go to Starbucks and they buy coffee and hot chocolate. We have sugar and cocoa in it. We know what happened to sugar and cocoa at this time of the year. And now you know what happened to Starbucks at this time of the year. Right around Christmas, starts to go down. Macy's is the exception to this. This is really interesting. I'm not quite certain why. We definitely want to sell it prior to Christmas. We see that. Uh, the chart will uh, populate in a moment there for you. There you go. So there's a selling opportunity the first part of December and Macy's comes down and then later on it starts to rally. Uh, Amazon. I might have Amazon in here. I don't recall. How is your true seasonal superior to standard settings? Well, Roland, everybody else's true seasonal will look just like the one of Macy's going back 10 years ago or 20 years ago. Look just like this, what you see in your chart. <coughs> but that's seasonal. It takes the data from 10 years ago up to now and then uses that seasonal that we know now, this seasonal, and puts it on your chart back then. So it's totally out of sample data. Every other seasonal strategy does that. But you didn't know back then what the seasonal pattern was using the current data. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so our seasonal only goes up to now. 
it doesn't take today's data and push it back in time. I don't know if that answers the question for you enough, but that's basically what we're doing. You know, you could look at all these stocks. I don't have them. I'm sorry. Uh, so we're going to finish with uh, Macy's. I think what I've done is open up a lot of doors for you here, show you some ground that you can go out there and plow yourselves. And uh, obviously, both Louise and I want to wish you a very Merry Christmas and uh, coming up with a prosperous New Year's as well. I'll hang around here a little bit for, for questions. I probably bored you enough for one day, though. Uh, well, thank you, Dolly. That's very kind of you. Uh, and if you have questions, I'll try to answer them for you. Oh, it's our pleasure to share this. That's especially what Christmas is about, right? Let's see if there's any questions. No, no spy details. Yeah, I, you know, I can't test everything, but now you guys and gals know about this, and you can go look at the seasonal pattern of these things as well yourself and see if there. Comments on copper. Mm, we had Larry TV had copper on it, I think, this week, but again, I can't test everything. Hey, you're a profitable trader. Way to go, Stefan. Boy, that's great to hear that. So many people have written and told us that they've never made money till they start working with us, and they're at least breaking even. That's a huge success in this business and are making money. Uh, XLF. Oh, you're looking that good now. Good. Okay. Uh, the 2018 forecast I'm working on, uh, uh, we'll have it. We'll have it for sure, but um, it's not ready yet. Uh, but we're working in 2018. I'm doing a lot of stuff on it. Uh, I wasn't pleased with the 2017 forecast, and disaster is good. And that was a disaster it called most of the year, but not all of it. But whenever you're wrong, it forces you to do more research, and you always learn from more research. So. We got some interesting stuff coming up for 2018. Oh, thank you very much. Okay, well we're going to wrap it up uh, from Noosa. Wow, we spent some nice times in Noosa. What a great to hear from you in Noosa. Uh, you know, it's, Noosa is so much like where we live, uh, except it's a lot more um, civilized. Hey, Mark, good having you here today. Can we get access to state? No, the the program that we use is just for us. We're going to be in Australia this coming year, we hope. So maybe we'll get to see some of our Australian friends down there. Okay, everybody. Well, thank you so much for being here. We both, uh, Louise and I, wish you a very Merry Christmas. And again, thank you for your support over the years. And I'm certain we'll be talking and seeing you soon, shortly.